It took a lot of guts for Paul Revere to take that ride, right? Alert people. Pretty much what he was doing was considered treason against the crown, right? So, So this is actually the stomach and the Wadham Junction histologically. Right? And it's a little confusing. This over here is stomach. So you've got pretty much you got your gastric pits, right? You'll have your chief cells and your uh, various stomach cells. Right? And then it'll turn into Duodenum. And you might, right? So these are microvilli, right? They may not be cut in perfectly longitudinal section, but you can see that they project out into the gut. The thing that's going to tip you off, right, is here. Here's the muscularis mucosa, right? So this stuff up here is mucosal, this down here beneath the muscularis, and please note, sometimes these smooth muscle cells will run right up into the villi. Okay? Uh, now the villi are going to have, right, your single, your simple columnar epithelium, and the connective tissue or lamina propria in here is going to be vascularized, lots of capillaries and lots of special lymphatic channels or, or ve uh, uh, vessels called lacteals. They're the ones that are going to take up the milk or, or um, they're going to take up the uh, fatty stuff. The thing that's going to tip you off is this submucosa. Right? Stomach, there isn't anything going on in the submucosa. Right, so above here not down here at the duodenum, but well, here are your Bruner's glands. Right. So in the intestine, in the submucosa, right, it marks this as the duodenum, and it makes those Bruner's glands. Right. Then you run into your smooth muscle here, and um, this is not even, this section is incomplete, but you can get the idea that that pyloric sphincter is a fairly thick layer of, um, of smooth muscle. Right? Um, it's sort of a uh, kind of a oblique section. Right? There are arteries uh, and veins, and you would use the same identifiers right, to tell the veins from, uh, from the arteries. So if you look at the composite, and we have sections that have duodenum right, by themselves, jejunum by themselves, ileum by themselves. Right? But I think the most instructive ones are, are the, um, the composites, and they have a section of each. So here is a, a section of intestine. Looking around, right? here are the microvilli. Right? And you can see, right? They're a true mucosa, right? And that is they have mucus goblet cells. Look at this, there's a beautiful mucus goblet cell. Nucleus in the bottom third, right? The top third pretty much occupied by that mucus droplet. 
The rest of the cells are enterocytes. Okay? They have a brush border of microvilli, sometimes referred to as striated border. Okay? They're not cilia. Okay? They're much smaller than cilia. Okay? But anyway, here's one end, here's the other end. Okay? And here's the lamina propria inside of the um, inside of the villus. So, lots of immune cells, lymphocytes and what have you in the connective tissue, right? Lots of capillaries. Um, you may see red cells in there. That. So, what's going to happen? Right? These guys have digestive enzymes in their membranes. Right? Uh, not only that, but they're secreting an enzyme called enterokinase. And enterokinase, unfortunately, it's not the world's best name, uh, is going to cut the prosequences off of the zymogens that come out of the pancreas. Right? And right, so it's going to activate the pancreatic enzymes, plus it has its own enzymes, and this wonderful uh, brush border of microvilli there has this tremendous elaboration of surface area that has transport proteins that are going to take up the um, small molecules produced by digestion, right? And those things are going to go across, move across the cell. They can't go between the cells because you have these active junctional complexes, right? So they have to get taken up by the cells, right? Transported through the cells and released at the basement membrane side. They can go into the connective tissue and pretty much, right, enter the circulation or the lymphatics, depending on you know which it is we're talking about. Now. An interesting thing about the villi and the mucosa of the intestine is that while you have these surface projections, these, these villi, right, that project out into the lumen of the gut, you also have these so-called crypts. And, right, so, I think Nick put it on the board there. These are called the crypts of Lieberkuhn. Right? Uh, and these are essentially glands that basically penetrate down all the way through that lamina propria, almost to the edge of the muscularis mucosae. These are not Bruner's glands. These are the crypts. Right? And you can see, pretty much, they're made out of the same cells, same types of cells for the most part, as compose the, the microvilli. So they're continuous, right? The whole epithelium, right, is continuous. It dives down into the pits, it comes up and extends all the way across the villa and so forth and so on. And these pits, these crypts, if you will, are very important, okay? and they're the site of proliferation of the gut cells and the differentiation, okay? and they are kind of organized. Okay? So they come down here, there's a layer at about this region, okay, which has the regenerative cells. These are the stem cells of the gut. And these cells are going to proliferate constantly because what's, what happens is the cells move up out of the crypts, up along the villi. They're short-lived. Eventually, they will die, and it will be butted off the top of the villi. So you have to constantly replenish right, the epithelial cells of the gut. Okay? So down here in this region, you're likely to see mitotic figures. Right? don't really see any here, but I have some slides that will show, show up very nicely. Right? Uh, and these cells divide, 
And the cells can either differentiate into mucus goblet cells and enterocytes and move up, or they can differentiate into a couple of protective cells, most likely the so-called PANETH cells, P-A-N-E-T-H cells, that are going to come down and they're going to reside at the bottom of the crypt. Those cells protecting the intestines from uh, microbial uh, pathogens. So they actually are going to secrete. Um, they're filled with eosinic granules. That's why their cytoplasm looks a little bit more eosinophilic. But if there are certain stains, right, and, and techniques which will make those granules stand out. And so, right, uh, if too many bacteria or the wrong kind of bacteria get in here, these guys act kind of like granulocytes in the blood. And they release their antibacterials and they do, business, they do battle with them right there. All right? Crypt. Um, and you can see, it's just a long channel. If you look around, you're going to find some that you can actually trace right, the lumen all the way up to the surface of the intestine. Um, these seem to all go part way off. Right? Now here's one. I mean, here's here that the crypt uh, lumen is coming out almost right, to the surface. Again, lots of immune cells in the lamina propria, here, which is the connective tissue of the mucosa. Here's the muscularis mucosa. <coughs> In this case, it's pretty prominent. Now, that's not always so. And beneath that, these are Brunner's glands. Right? Mucosa, muscularis mucosa. This is down here, is in the submucosal connective tissue. And those are Brunner's glands. The submucosal connective tissue, pretty much loose irregular. Okay. Uh, whereas here, I think you would have to concede that this is somewhat more dense. I and mean, these are all collagen fibers in here, so that's pretty much a dense irregular connective tissue. And not surprisingly, just as we saw in the mammary glands, that dense connective tissue is, is supporting and protecting Bruner's glands. Right. Then, right, uh, as you come out of that submucosal gland, here is the first layer of smooth muscle. It's circular. What I mean is, is that it encircles the circumference of the gut tube. Right? No matter how it looks, right, the angle of the section can change. But the circular and longitudinal muscle, they don't change. The one closest to the mucosa is circular. And the one beneath that is longitudinal. Right? So you'll be able to tell, with that fact, you'll be able to tell what orientation this section was cut in. Was it a cross section across the gut tube, or was it longitudinal? This is a longitudinal section. In a longitudinal section, the longitudinal muscles look longitudinal, the circular muscles, right, a cut and cross section. Right? So anyway, right? mucosa, muscularis mucosa, right? submucosa and glands, right? It's duodenum. Here's the smooth muscle, the circular. And oh, by the way, right? this is part of Meissner's plexus. Right? These are the nerve cells, part of the nerve network, sitting on top of the circular smooth muscle between it and the submucosa. Right? And if you're looking for these different plexes, right, you can pretty much just you know, go along the boundary. Here's another part of Meissner's plexus. Right? So, right? And then down in here, in between 
the circular and the longitudinal smooth muscle, if you find these nervous tissue, uh, that's going to be our back plexus, and here are some right in here. And in here. This thing here is part of that nerve net, and that's our back plexus. The jejunum, a little bit simpler. Same exact organization, right? Here's your uh, mucosa. I'm going to go down in magnification. Here's your villi. Pretty much the same organization. Um, a lot of enterocytes, some mucus goblet cells, pretty much the lamina propria of the villi are similar. Right? Um, lots of circular, you know, capillaries and lymphatics. Uh, they also have crypts that come down. This is not the world's best orientation. But these crypts, I mean, here extend through the lamina propria of the muscle of the mucosa, right? To the surface. They can be quite deep. And again, muscularis, mucosa, that's the limit, right? All of the crypts. So, right, if you're wondering, is it a gland or is it a crypt? And the answer is, which side of the muscularis mucosa is it? Right? If it's on a mucosal side, it's a crypt. Okay? They do not penetrate the muscularis mucosa. So we'll take a look at the crypts here. And um, we see there's a couple of cells. Okay? One is these cells here, which Nick pointed out, kind of resemble the Langerhans cells that you saw in the stratum spinosum, right? Um, these are DNES cells for diffuse oral, um, diffuse neuroendocrine system. It's essentially the endocrine system of the gut, right? The organs of the gut talk to one another through the nerve net and through their own hormone system, their own endocrine system, right? Uh, and so that's what these guys are. Every, right? Every now and then, right, you're going to find cells that uh, are, are undergoing mitosis. This is a mitotic figure. I have other cell uh, sections. They're not going to look. They're small cells, right? And that mammalian genome now is packed inside of a teeny little cell. So they're not going to look like those really nice amphibian mitoses or those fish embryo mitoses. Right? Um, so you're going to have to sort of, you know, look at them. Here's, here's another one. And um, you know, you're don't, not necessarily going to identify stages of mitosis, but you can identify them as mitosis. And, right, so pretty much the same organization. The submucosa in the jejunum, dense irregular connective tissue, apparently. Look at the size of those collagen fibers, right? Blood vessels, nerves. Same circular and longitudinal smooth muscle. And a serosal layer here. So it's connective tissue. It could be, you know, whatever in here. But there is, you can barely see the nuclei of those endothelial cells um, in cross section. And the ilium is. Um, Again, same sort of thing. 
Here are our microvilli. They're projecting out in the gut. They're cut at all different angles. Now, one thing you might notice, right, but you, you probably don't want to hang your head on this, right? There's a lot more mucus goblet cells in this mucosa than there was in either the duodenum or the jejunum. And in fact, they're not doing a whole lot of nutrient uptake, right? They're starting the process of resorbing water out of the chyme and starting to, you know, uh, uh, solidify the chyme now, right? Dehydrated. So they're going to be needing a, a fair amount of mucus, right, to protect the mucosa. Okay? As we're about to look at the colonic mucosa, you'll see really the ileum is kind of half in between small intestine and, and the colon, right? Still has microvilli, but it has a preponderance of mucus goblet cells. But the only identifier you should trust, right, is that in the lamina propria, I'm sorry, in the submucosa, here's the muscularis mucosa, here's the end of the crypts, here's the crypts, giant immune nodules. These are Peyer's patches. And like I said, be sure to look at these slides with your eye just to, to get an idea of just how big these things are. Right? And in fact, this one pretty much has a germinal uh, center, okay? as does this one. Now I want you to notice right, uh, that, in fact, the Peyer's patches actually form these domes that project into the lumen of the gut. Right? And they have special cells here, which I'm not going to ask you to identify. Okay? Oh, oh, in the mucosa, overlying Peyer's patch is called M cells. It stands for microfold cells. And these cells are involved with engulfing bacteria and right, helping the immune system by passing these bacteria and their parts onto antigen presenting cells and B cells and that sort of stuff. They're also involved in the uptake of immunoglobins. The gut has its own immune system. It secretes immunoglobin A, right, and circulates it through the gut, takes it back up in the ileum, sends it through the hepatic portal vein to the liver, takes them out, right? The, the hepatocytes take them out of the liver and put them back, uh, take them out of the blood and put them back into the gut. If I show you a picture like this and I say, what part of the gut is it? Right? If I show you any picture of the gut, if it has Peyer's patches in the submucosa, it's the ileum. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not. Right? And it'll never be a situation where, oh, you should have recognized. We're not going to discriminate between the microvilli of the duodenum and the jejunum or the ileum. We're going to discriminate on, do you have Buner's glands? You're the duodenum. Do you have Peyer's patches? You're the ileum. Do you have neither? You're the jejunum. That's it, period. All right? That's not to say that there aren't some fine distinctions, but we're just not going to worry about them. So that's, uh, that pretty much is the three parts. Um, of the intestine. Right? So it looks like a pretty um, uh, huge bunch of slides. Um, the deal is, well, you're not really going to be asked to look at, at those. Um,
Here is, happens to be a section of helium that's been stained to show the tannin cells. And here they are. Right. So, the tannin cells are part of the mucosa. They are found at the very bottom of the crypts. And right, these were stained with a special stain, which highlights their eosinophilic <coughs> granules. And so here they are. Right, this is the bottom of the crypt, and these cells here are tannin cells, as determined by those antimicrobial eosinophilic granules that are in the cytoplasm, right, pointing towards the lumen of the crypt, right? So they will, right, they have receptors on their cells that will, you know, if, if it will uh, alert them if they need to uh, unload these granules there if there are uh, bacteria that are requiring uh, killing them. Right? So here they are. And depending on how you section them, you know, they'll look like this, or they can look Right, like this. This is a glancing section, pretty much like this, through the bottom of the crypt, and they, and they look rather like that. Sometimes in a very thin section, right, stained with H and E, you can kind of see a granular cytoplasm, but um, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't hang my hat. Now these are very, very thin sections. So most of what we look at, the cells were embedded in wax. Wax it is not, doesn't have a huge mechanical properties. And you can pretty much cut them three microns thick if you're really good. Most of the sections we're looking at are four microns thick. These cells were fixed and embedded in plastic. And <laughs> plastic is great because you can section much thinner, right? Uh, and so, right, you get a very nice view of what's going on in um, this section of the jejunum. Right? Uh, these are smooth muscle cells. These are the inner circular, the outer longitudinal, right? Um, the outer longitudinals are, are, are in this preparation are just spectacular. I mean, you, you know, you can see. Right, the endomesium around each fiber of smooth muscle. Uh, here's the connective tissue on the outside of that longitudinal, and these things here, uh, these are endothelial nuclei, you know, from the serosal layer. Right? Here's a, a very nice Auerbach plexus. Right? Um, here's the circular muscle. Right? And now you're into the um, um, submucosa. Right? This, by the way, then is going to be the muscularis mucosae. And then you're looking at here the crypts. Right? Uh, and, right, and then up above, right, you'll be up in the villi. Right? Well, let's, come, let's direct our attention back here in the crypts. Um, because here, it, it's, right, you can really see the mitotic cells, right? Here's one, there's one. Uh, um, there's one, just a couple. These guys are mitotic cells. That's, that's what mitotic figures look, look like in situ, all right? Um, And 
right? These are probably panic cells. So it's so thin that you know you can actually get staining uh, of these granules just from the from the eosin. Here would be one of those DNAS cells. Usually those things are going to be surrounded by a clear layer of cytoplasm. Right? We're in the crypt. Right? And the, right, the reason for that is they're not secreting their stuff, their granules, into the lumen. They're secreting their hormone producing cells. They're secreting their stuff into connective tissue so it can get into the circulatory system so that it can spread through the other digestive organs. I'll leave this one out. This was, this was from the special reserve collection, but I'll leave this one out for you to take a look at because it's a pretty nice cell, pretty nice uh, specimen. Okay. All of that takes us to colon. And the colon is going to be recognizable as, um, you know, uh, pretty much intestines. Now, this slide of the colon has been stained uh, with um, mucicarmin. It's staining the mucus, goblets, okay? um, and then as well as H&E. So it's very nice. The, you get the nice, you've seen the carmine color before, right? And it looks like that. Now this isn't staining glycogen. It's staining mucinogens, right? Or mucins in, um, uh, in the mucus, right? And here is, you know, classic kind of colonic uh, organization, right? You have crypts down here. Uh, you've got connective tissue. What you don't have is microvilli. Right? They pretty much have a flat surface throughout the entire colonic epithelium. Right? Um, uh, and not a whole lot of absorptive cells. <clears throat> By and large, sure looks like mostly mucus goblet cells. There are actually a few absorptive cells, but you, you, know, you can look for them if you want. I, I wouldn't, uh, I'm not gonna force the issue. And again, right, let's face it, you're taking this chyme and you're concentrating it and you're, right, helping to solidify it, you're creating poop. Right? And it's loaded with bacteria because you're concentrating into the dense slurry of bacteria. So, guess what? It's going to be a lot of lymphoid tissue here. There could be big, giant follicles. Remember, right? The, what we talked about the malt, the so called mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, or galt, gut associated lymphoid tissue. You can see it everywhere. Right? Sometimes it appears as diffuse lymphocytes. Sometimes it's huge right? lymphoid follicles. Right? And you're, you're going to see that in the ileum right? and into the colon as well. The rest of the colon, pretty much gut organization. You got your muscularis. Now, right? there is one difference. Right? Uh, and that is you have huge circular smooth muscles that, that are continuous. But the longitudinal smooth muscle are basically organized in strips. And in a large part, right, and, and of the colon, those strips, right, uh, aren't continuous. You might have three or so. And these strips of longitudinal smooth muscle, you can actually see here, right? they're called the tania coli. Circular muscle continues. 
smooth muscle, not so much. And so when the circular muscle contracts, right, it's gonna cause the large intestine walls to blouse out around here, right? So the so-called, right, these like sacs, they're gonna change depending on what's, you know, what's in there. They're not permanent structures. But as they contract and, and as the contents move through here, right, the sort of uh, pouching out pattern uh, is, is gonna change. Finally, that colon is gonna, right? It's gonna ascend, is gonna tra traverse the gut cavity, is gonna descend, right? And go through the sigmoid colon, and eventually it's going to come up to the rectum. And by that time, in the rectum would basically mean straight. So it's the straight tube, right? Anyway, the chyme has been condensed into a semi-solid. And I think what you're gonna see is almost entirely at this point, mucus goblet cells, right? The surface is gonna be lined by mucus goblet cells. Right, of the colon, and it's going to grade into the rectum. And the rectum is going to be right, colonic epithelium that is going to join with Right, here it is, colonic epithelium. That's gonna transition into stratified squamous non-keratinizing epithelium. Right. Remember, you end up with these not these stratified squamous epitheliums where there's a lot of friction. There's a lot of friction, right? Um, eventually, that rectal epithelium is gonna grade into the anus. And at that point, it goes from a non-keratinizing to a keratinizing epithelium because it's joined with the skin. Yeah, for all intents and purposes, it is the reverse of what you saw at the lip. At the lip, you went from keratinized to non-keratinized. Well, um, that pretty much is our tour through the tube work of the digestive system. Let's take five. We can talk about the liver and the pancreas, and then, blessedly, we will be done. All right, but I gotta get my props here. You still got my liver, right? Okay. So let's take five. I need coffee. <clears throat>
So we have an advantage here. So it's this big brownish looking organ. And it's basically a, a, a filter for blood. And filled with sinuses, sinusoidal capillaries. Right? Has epithelial tubes. Those epithelial tubes have a lot of functions. They synthesize most of the blood proteins, including complement, um, albumin, and whatnot. They synthesize bile, right? The bile comes down the bile duct behind the pancreas and enters the duodenum. Off of that bile duct in, in a lot of mammals, including us, is a gallbladder. And this is just <coughs> an, for extra storage of bile, right, to be released when you have um, a meal. Um, so it's got huge amount of circulation. Right? And it has two basic inputs of blood. Now pay attention. What brings oxygenated blood to the liver? Anybody? What what kind of vessels carry oxygenated blood? An artery. So the hepatic artery is bringing in oxygenated blood from the systemic circulation from the aorta. The liver also receives blood from the intestines. It receives blood from the small intestine. Right? Think about what goes on in the intestines. Right? You have an exchange between the epithelium and the capillary system. Oxygenated blood comes in through the capillaries up into the villi it gets nutrients. It gets sugars, it gets amino acids, and that sort of stuff. And while it's getting them, it's losing its oxygen. Because, right, all of those immune cells are using the oxygen, all of those epithelial cells which are pumping ions are using that oxygen. And the nutrients that have come in leave through a vein, the venous side of that capillary bed. And they collect into veins, and they empty into something called, anybody know? The hepatic portal vein. The hepatic portal vein. It basically means the vein that carries to the liver. That's what porter means, right? Somebody who carries things, right? Um, right? So interestingly enough, the nutrition, the, right? All, all the nutritional elements that come from the intestine are coming in on the venous supply through this portal vein. And, right? And so what's going to happen in the liver at the layer of the cells is this. The liver is organized in a way that the nutrient-rich blood that comes in from the hepatic portal vein right, is going to mix 
with the oxygen-rich blood from the hepatic artery. Okay. So, arterioles from the hepatic artery, venules from the hepatic portal vein are going to mix in these blood sinuses. And they're going to wash over those blood sinuses. Okay? And they're going to wash over the hepatocytes. The hepatocytes, the liver, gets first dips on the nutrients. Right? It gets to take in sugar. If blood sugar levels are high, the liver takes it in, turns it into glycogen. Muscle will also do this. Right? Um, it gets first dibs on amino acids. It's making important stuff, man. It's making albumin. We saw what happens if you don't have enough amino acids and you can't make enough albumin, you get that quashia core. Right? So these cells, right, are covered, right? They're in these sinuses. The sinuses are part of the capillary, right? So there are sinusoidal endothelial cells. And the liver cells take out what they want. They can also secrete into the blood. They make albumin and secrete back into the sinusoids. That's in the blood. You've now added more albumin to the blood. You need complement proteins? They're there. You need fibrin? It's there. Um, so liver is getting it. Now, one of the other things that the liver does is it processes wastes from red cell breakdown in terms of heme. Okay? And it secretes those waste down products in, in, in with, along with another function. It makes bile. And bile pretty much is used to emulsify fats. They take big fat globules and break them into little fat globules, which Nick will tell you increases the surface area for digestion. Okay. And the liver, right, is going to basically add these bile salts, detoxify them, and excrete them into the bile. 